The past few weeks, I've been working on this. It's an online 3D library. However, it's not your classic old finite library. That'd be boring, right? It's an infinite library, meaning it's got infinite floors, infinite books, and definitely infinite wisdom. However, you probably won't find the latter. Good morning and welcome to the Library of Lyon. The main concept behind this library is actually quite simple. It contains every possible book. Specifically, it contains all arrangements of the letters of the English alphabet and a few formatting ones. And every floor contains every book of a certain length. For example, on floor 100, every book of length 100 characters is on that floor. And there are infinite floors. Thus, every word, every sentence, every essay, every book is in there somewhere. Of course, most of them are actually total gibberish and you won't understand them. However, some are not. And to understand that fully, we're going to look at five fun things about the Library of Lyon. This one is this button here. It opens a random book and when you click on it, it opens a random book from the floor you're currently on. And there's a tiny chance, a very, very tiny chance, that it shows a text about you, about your personality, about the secrets you have. Maybe it could contain the solution to the hardest problem of science right now. And that's really interesting, right? But it doesn't look like much. And maybe there's some secret language in which it can be read and in which it makes sense. Or maybe you have to be the one to invent that. But most of the time, almost always. It doesn't make sense. Okay, this thing here is the book search. And you can type in any sentence, every text you want, as little as long as you want, and it will tell you the location inside the library. But you could also teleport to that room and look around in it, and you'll find that one book is highlighted. And that book actually contains the thing you search for. And you could also look at the books around your book. And you'll notice that the books are actually alphabetically ordered. And if you look around, you also notice that some rooms are not open. And that's because you're at the edge of your current floor. And the floors are only finite in size. However, you will soon discover that something is a bit different with this library. Why are most books at the edge of each floor? One main challenge of this library is searching for books not only by teleporting, but by actually showing you the path how to get there. And you can show that path with this button here. And if you click it, you see these arrows on the floor that you can follow to the book. And if you follow them, you'll actually arrive at the room we were previously in. And if you think about this, it's even almost impossible, right? The number of rooms is absolutely huge. Let's go to floor 20, for example. That means that for every character in the book, let's say it's A, B, C, D, E, F, and continues, you have 30 different options because you have all the letters from A to Z, you have a space, you have a dot, you have a comma, and you have a new line character. The new line character means that there's another line after that. So these are 30 different characters that you have. So if the book is 20 characters long, you have 30 to the power of 20 different options because that, that's 30 options for the first letter times 30 to 30 for the last letter, right? Or we can we can simplify this. This is approximately equal to 3.5 times 10 to the 29. And this number is huge. It's it's a number of 29 digits, right? And that's really big. So how many rooms are there? Well, let's say that each room has approximately 1,664 books. To get the number of rooms, we just divide this by this. 2.1 times 10 to the 26 different rooms. And that number is still absurdly huge, right? That's a number of 26 digits. So this number is definitely too large to wander around in a normal world. But luckily, our library doesn't exist in a normal world. Let's look at our library. If you go forwards and then left, you end up in a different room than when you go left and then forwards. And this is basically a non-Euclidean geometry that we're achieving with this, and this enables the number of rooms to grow exponentially. And that gets crazy. See this error here? Let's go around the corner and... Uh, whoops, it's gone. 
That's also a reason why you're following the path. It looks like you're going in circles, but how much does this really shorten the path to any given room? So let's calculate that. At the beginning, you're here in the middle and you have four doors to visit. One, two, three, four. And each one of these doors gets you to a unique room, right? And let's say you go through this door, then you have only three more new doors to go through because the one that you came from just takes you back to the previous room, right? So the number of rooms that you can visit by going through n doors grows exponentially, or it grows with four times three to the n minus one. And this is an exponential function. And to the active listener, you may have noticed this is really cool because interestingly, since the number of rooms and the number of books, they grow exponentially, they both grow linearly to each other. And this is really interesting. This means that the path length actually grows linearly. For example, if you were to search a book that's 300 characters long, it would only take approximately 900 steps because the factor between these is approximately three as shown in the paper I'm including now. And if you want a detailed explanation, stop now, else we're going to the next point. As you may have noticed, I've included a comment function here. And you can write your comment here and comment any book you want. You, For example, I could write Max Giesinger. And Max Giesinger writes, Hello, this book is amazing. And you can only include the characters that are actually available in the library itself. So I'll have to leave those away. And when you submit them, they'll appear in the book. And this is actually really interesting because, of course, there are infinite books, but... Not all books contain comments, and it's really quite hard to find them. For example, if I just click on a random book, there's probably no comments there. So it's it's quite a task to find the comments, and I think it's actually quite fun to leave them in random places as well. Anyways. Okay, this aspect is kind of cheating. It's about how I made this website, how it's possible to visualize the endless and generate all these books. Of course, you can see all the code I used on the GitHub repository I linked in the description but I can at least show you how the graphics works. The first secret is that you never actually leave any room. In fact, you always stay in this middle room. And when you go through a door, you're actually teleported to the opposite place in the room. And you can see this really well when I elevate the camera here. When you look down, you can see that when I, when I go through this door, I actually teleport between rooms. And this is true for any door you go through, so you're always in the middle, and I think this is quite a handy way of cheating. And you can you can see that only certain rooms are rendered outside, and only to a certain limit, so you can't actually see endless, but because you're teleported to the other side of a room, it looks like you can go forever, and you can, at least to the edge of the floor, of course. Well, the book generation, path mapping, and all the, that sort of stuff, it's basically a matter of converting numbers to different bases. For example, here you have a book ID, you can convert that into binary, you could convert that into text by just interpreting the alphabet as a bunch of characters you can use as letters, as numbers in fact, and you can convert that into a path. So basically it's all about converting numbers. However, it's not quite as simple as that because for example, at the beginning of the first step, you actually have four new doors instead of three. So you have to do a little bit of thinking, but it's just, matter of converting numbers. Also, I made it so that on mobile you can activate live mode where you can actually look around your phone to look around the library and click on books. I think that one is actually quite cool. I'm also thinking about porting it to a VR experience with VR glasses, but I don't really have them and I think this is actually really close to VR as it is. Maybe even a bit cooler. Anyhow, in case you made it through that explanation at the end, be sure to click the random button a few times. Let's let's click it one last time ourselves. Oh, oh, hi, Floor. Oh, oh, what's this? Oh, oh, wait, what? Anyhow, as some of you, or most of you probably have noticed, this idea of arranging all the books of all arrangements of possible letters, this isn't exactly new, nor is it from me. It's actually, to the best of my knowledge, from this guy, Jorge Luis Borges, sorry for my pronunciation, he's written this short story in 1941 where you have men living in these hexagonal rooms that are full of books in this seemingly infinite library. 
the Library of Babel, he called it, which, by the way, has a worse acronym than mine. And it's really fascinating. The men, they form cults, they kill each other over meaning. They, they seek the one who has read the truth about the library. Because, of course, someone, of course, must have read the one book that contains the truth, right? And later on, actually, Jonathan Basile, he made this amazing library online, which is just amazing. You can browse through it. And of course, my library is kind of a copy of that. But I think my library is kind of unique in that it's 3D and has a non-Euclidean aspect to it. But it's pretty much a copy of his work, so definitely check that out. Most of you probably have already because it's a really popular website and I think it's actually really pretty. I wish you loads of fun. Do press that random button and goodbye. Have a good year.